All right, you guys, it's Ross the Fig Boss. We're doing a taste test today. Uh, we're looking at some varieties. I have some insanely good figs in front of me here today. This is quite the sight. Um, you know, this is probably the last time I'll get to do something like this of the year, actually. We're at the very end of my season right now. We are, today's Halloween. And on Tuesday or Wednesday, we could potentially see a frost or a very, very light kiss of frost, which may start to send these trees now further and further into dormancy. They're already starting to drop their leaves. You can see they, the leaves look like they've got, you know, rust on them and things like that. That's just because the trees are kind of rejecting them and they're starting to fall now. Um, and the wind's been blowing and knocking a lot of the trees off onto the ground and different things. So pretty soon when we get a couple frosts, they'll be fully into dormancy. You know, and I'll be pretty much, that'll wrap up my entire season right then and there. But considering how late it is and considering also how much rain we've been having, I'm just shocked at the fruit quality here in front of me. It's pretty spectacular. It's pretty insane. This is a real special treat. Uh, you know what? I get this at multiple times of the year, but typically it's not throughout the entire season. Um, we have had a lot of varieties ripen, you know, in the last week or so, uh, maybe the last two weeks, because I really pinched a lot of these trees uh, to try to squeeze in every last fruit. And this was like three months ago we did this. So to try to pinch all the trees to get them to at least produce something or to squeeze out a little bit of fruit out of them, that's where we're at now. And that's why I have really more fruit really hit the very last day of the season typically than maybe at other times of the year. Today I picked about 50 fruits and I could have picked a lot more. And you know what, I've been picking some nice amount of fruits as the season has progressed, but for whatever reason, because I think because it's been so cold, the fruit flies have kind of chilled and their metabolisms have slowed and they're not really around as much. Um, and I was able to produce really good quality fruits. So I wanted to taste some of these guys for you. First up is the Moro de Caneva. This has just been just an outright standard. It's been the best fruit in terms of production, uh, in terms of the size, the sheer weight. I, I have ripened more of these than any other fruit by far. Although I have many trees of it, they all produce. They all produce, they all produce well, and they all produce large figs, and they all produce even when all the fruit flies are around. This fig is fantastic. It does ferment. The fruit flies will get after it, but if you pick it a little bit early, there's nothing to worry about. Um, in fact, you can pick it a little bit early, cut it in half, put them on a plate in your fridge with the skin side down, and they'll start to dry in your fridge and they turn into really incredible figs. You don't have to necessarily let them ripen as long as I do, I've learned, uh, but anyway, so this is the Moro de Caneva. Pure jam. Super, super good. Very sweet. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I don't know. People should really wake up because that fig is incredible. Uh, let's try another one here. This is, oddly enough, my first... Violet Sapor of the season. My Violet Sapor and Borges Oak Grease produced a lot of fruits. Uh, it's weird because it's just now that they're ripening. Violet Sapor produced a little bit earlier, actually. Produced a lot of fruits. I really like these, these two trees for a high dense system like, like I have. Um, and the fruit quality is top of the line. No matter where you live, Highly recommend this one even for California if you can caprify it. Woo. It's a, you know, I was thinking actually in the same way that I've just mentioned Moro de Caneva, that I was gonna harvest more of those fruits than any other variety and the sheer weight of them was gonna be higher than any other variety. But the Moro de Caneva beat it out big time. Just above in all respects, the earliness of it, the amount of fruits, the size of them, 
Uh, everything seemingly is better, although I would still highly recommend for anybody that is trying a commercial variety, I think those two really are good additions or good, good figs to try. This is a uh, white Marseille, and you know what? It's so well ripened, it started to kind of dry on the tree. People don't give this fig enough credit. I have Barbalone, it's the black skinned version of white Marseille. They're both really good. Um, I think I'm more of a fan though of the white Marseille. Let's try this. Now yeah, actually it's a little watered down. That kind of stinks. A little watered down in the flavor, but uh, typically it's a really good honey fig, guys. And I know it performs well here. Even Thomas Jefferson, uh, that was the fig he grew over at, uh, what's the place in Virginia that he, Monticello it's called. So that was one of his favorites. It's getting a little chilly out here, guys. I need a, I need a jacket or something. All right. What else we got? I got Negra de Agde. This is an interesting fruit. I don't think I'm gonna eat it. I don't think I'm gonna try it, but it's been really impressive so far. I, you know, the shape isn't great, but with all the rain we've been getting, somehow the fruit just doesn't split. And that's kind of the reputation of it. It just doesn't split. Um, it's so strange because the, the shape really goes against a lot of what I've been saying. You could see a lot of them right in there are ripening. See that branch back there in the middle of the screen? So it's covered in fruits and they've all been ripening right now. And uh, I was really surprised to find that the fruit quality was also really high. But these, this fruit here, the reason I'm not tasting it is because I picked it early. And a couple of those I picked early today because uh, I'm going to lay them in the fridge, like I said. They're going to ripen and continue to really intensify in the fridge. I don't want to I don't want to do that, you know, ruin that because it's going to get better from this point. And it's weird. A lot of these fruits actually will get slightly better. Almost all of them actually will get slightly better if I leave them in the fridge. The white Marseille, probably not because that's so watered down as it is. Here is a uh, Sultane. You don't hear anything about this fruit. French fig. I should have, and I wanted to do its own review. Haven't really gotten a good representation of this variety other than maybe this fig. I know they're going to be better than this, but this is extremely sweet, very juicy, lots of honey. Um, my tree, I was really impressed by the production on it this year. I thought it was going to need a bit more light than it was getting, but it did really, really well. The unfortunate part is that the fruit fly has just devoured it this year. So um, I think it's a great tasting fruit. I'm a fan. Um, for overall, I think it's a great little keeper there. All right, what else we got? We got a uh, Smith. I'm not, I'm not gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna taste these. Every single Smith that I ripen this year ripens pretty much to perfection. It's such a great fig, guys. Very few of them were spoiled. Very few of them were ruined. Uh, very few of the fruit flies even got to them. Super, super good. Here is a prosciutto. This one actually had split on me. It's amazing how dark red it is, though. I just wanted to point that out. So this fig, I think, is going to split a bit more often than I'd like, and that's unfortunate. It does seem to dry well, and that's really why I seem to like it. But if it's gonna keep splitting like this, it's not gonna end up being too great. Yeah, I mean, it's just a little underripe. But here's the thing, if it doesn't split and it's pretty dry out like it's been, I mean, that fig is gonna turn into some amazing experience. And I've had that multiple times now this season. Um, so I think there's a balance there with that particular variety that I know it's not going to be perfect. I know it's not going to, you know, never split, but I do at least know that it's incredibly 
highly flavored. And uh, for that, there's, a, there's at least some minuses, but there's some good benefits. And, and uh, I think enough of that leaning towards the benefits is making me want to say that it's, uh, you know, at least a higher fig than, than most of the varieties I've tried. Um, all right, so let's continue on. What is this? Oh, this is a, uh, what is that? Green Maturinska. Here's the other side of Smith. So we got two more. This is called Arona. We just tried this. We did a comparison between this and uh, Nuestra Senora del Carmen. This is just a great fig, guys. I really do highly recommend this in all respects. The flavor is just like a black Madeira. It's so, so good. Now, one of the figs that really has been impressing me, and I think I'm just, honestly, might be the better version of prosciutto, like in all respects, other than maybe the drying capabilities, is this fig here. This green Michurinska really is super, super impressive. All the figs ripened well. Really, none of them split. And they all taste great. You know what else is true? That if I plant the prosciutto in the ground, which I don't have it in the ground, it is going to split less. And it probably will impress me. So I really am going to put that one in the ground, I think, regardless of, yeah, it does split. But when I put it in the ground, I'm going to see a huge difference. It's definitely this, the case, I think, with this green Michurinska that if you grew this in a pot, I think it would split a little bit more than you'd like. Um, super good. Pure, awesome berry jam. Wow, intense. And you know what? We did kind of mention that it wasn't an Adriatic type. You know, I was saying that for a while that it's just not similar to green Aishia, but as it, as it really matured more and the, I got to taste more fruits, the berry flavor intensified a lot. And it really does remind me of an Adriatic. It really has that intense strawberry, um, that intense raspberry flavor that you might find in those. And for me, I think it's just wonderful. I'm a huge fan of that fruit of the Adriatic types, just in general, I don't think you can really go wrong. So, uh, yeah, Green Michurinska, I think it's gotten itself in its, uh, my top 10 or something like that, maybe my top 15. We'll see you guys soon. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Hit that subscribe button. Catch you guys for the next one.